All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Discovery's four computers now have primary control. Hello there, this is Launch with another Scratch tutorial for you. Today we're making a Petri Dish survival game. At least it's our own version of the Augur I.O. game you might have played on the internet or on your phone. Okay, let's get started. The first thing that you're going to want to do is get rid of the Scratch Catch sprite and add in three ball sprites. I have added them from the sprite library and you can go ahead and rename them. I've renamed my sprites Player, Blob, and Food. We will be using a lot of variables and some lists throughout this project. So if you are uncomfortable or unfamiliar with variables and lists, that is okay. You can just copy down what I have done in this video. Um, if that's something that you're trying to understand and learn about, then please do pay attention to the video as you might learn something. But for now, let's make a variable and call it my size. And I do want to make it available for all sprites. Okay, and then uh, we will make our other variables for the other sprites as well. So let's click on the blob sprite and create a new variable. So make a variable and let's call this one clone num. And let's make it available for all sprites as well. And let's make another variable called my ID. However, this one you do need to check for this sprite only. That's very important. And then let's jump over to the food sprite and make a variable called food amount. And let's make that available for all sprites. And then let's go back to the blob sprite and we're going to make two lists. So let's make a list blob sizes for all sprites, very important. And let's make another one called blob speed for all sprites. Wow, okay, we have tons of variables and lists here. That's great. Um, what I'm going to do right now is uncheck these checkboxes so that we no longer see them. I might pull them up again later as we run through our program just to test and debug. But for now, let's go back to our player sprite and get coding. So I want everything to run when the green flag is clicked. So let's drag that over. And when it is clicked, I want our player to start in the center of the screen. So we will go to x equals 0, y equals 0. And I want to set our clone, or sorry, my size to 0. I'm going to re, or not to 0, let's set it to 30. So I'm going to set my size to 30, just in case it had been changed by the previous player, or who, you know, if, if you were playing it earlier, this changes throughout gameplay so we have to reset it when we restart the game and let's set the actual size of our sprite to match our variable so this variable is saying that uh, we have a variable called my size and that variable is holding the value of 30 and now we're saying okay we want to set our actual size of our sprite to whatever, that whatever the value of that variable is. So in this case, right now, it's 30. As we play the game, this variable will hold a different value. It will change you know, to 25 or maybe to 40 or something, and we want to always reset our size to whatever this variable is saying it is. Um, I always like to wait a second after the player presses the green flag just because um, it takes a second for you, you know, to get ready to play. But then after that, I want to loop through the uh, code that will make the, the sprite follow our mouse. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, first let's do the motion blocks. So point towards the mouse pointer and then move. And I'm going to have us move a certain amount of steps in relation to how big we are. So I want to say move whatever the number is, 600 divided by my size. If I just did my size, then the bigger we got, the faster we would move. 
but I actually want to make it so that the bigger we get, the slower we move. So I'm putting a large number over here and uh, having it divided by, or having my size divided by the large number. If you want to make your sprite move even faster, then increase this number to like a thousand or something. If you want it to move more slowly, then decrease this number down to a hundred or something. Okay, and then I also want to say that if our sprite ever hits the edge to bounce off of it. Um, I don't want it going off the screen or anything like that. So let's just press the green flag and see what happens. Okay, it waited a second and now it's following the mouse. But do you see how the sprite now is going crazy whenever it gets close to the mouse? Well, I want to fix that by saying if it is, I want it to only run this code if the sprite is not touching the mouse pointer. Okay, there we go, and that should fix it most of the time. Sometimes it will still kind of spaz out like that, but most of the time this should work. And what I also want to do is each time we run through this loop, I not only want it to move a little bit, but I want to check that size variable and reset our actual size to that size variable just in case it's changed. And you'll see where it changes in one of these other sprites uh, when it eats a blob or food it will grow in size or if it gets if it touches a blob that's too big then we will die so uh, we need to go back and check to make sure that our uh, size is always corresponding to the my size variable now i want to do one more thing in the sprite and then we'll be done but the last thing i need to do is another little script that runs in parallel to this code so basically, I want this to run at the same time that this is going on, but I want it to run separately. It's going to run on another forever loop, and it's going to say uh, forever wait. And I want it to wait according to the size that we are. And um, after it's waited, I want it to change my size by negative one. So basically what this is saying is, let's say my size is 10. I want it to wait 10 divided by 10, which is one. So wait one second and then change my size by negative one. So I'm going to shrink a little bit. So the bigger I get, let's say I'm 1000, then I have to wait. Oh wait, I did that backwards. Yeah, okay, this is the way. Yeah, one, one, okay, so let's first start off with 10. Okay, 10, so I, 10 divided by 10 is one, so 10 seconds. Okay, so 10 divided by, let's say my size is 100. So that's one tenth of a second. So then I barely wait at all until I go through this loop again. So if I'm really big, then I go pretty quickly through this, but if I'm really small, let's say I'm only one, then I have to wait 10 seconds before I change my size again. So that's great. Uh, that'll be cool. I think that'll add a little bit extra challenge. Now let's work on the blob sprite. This is where we will get a little bit more intense, okay? So first, let's just start off when the green flag is clicked. Uh, we are going to straight away hide ourselves because we're only gonna show the clones of the sprite, not the actual sprite. And let's set one of our variables to zero just to make sure that we're starting at zero. So the clone num is gonna be set to zero. And we also wanna delete everything from both of our lists. So from blob speed and blob sizes. Now let's get into creating our clones. So forever, I want to wait, uh, let's say two seconds, should be enough time. Uh, every two seconds, I want to change the clone number by one, and then I wanna create a clone of myself. If you want the clones to appear more rapidly, then make this number smaller. If you want to make them appear more slowly, make this number bigger. Now, when I start as a clone, I'm gonna drag this block over and, and say, when I start as a clone, the first thing I wanna do is, I wanna set my ID, which is a local variable only available to the blob and not to any anybody else but it's a local variable and i want to set my id 
to the clone number. After I've done that, I want to insert a couple items into our list. And basically, the list is going to hold all of the values that we put into it for the different clones sizes and speeds. And we just want to make a list of that because they're going to be referenced later and they're going to be used as they move around the screen. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to pick a random number between 20 and uh, whatever my size is from the player. This is the player's variable accessed over here in the blob. So my size times two. So basically I want to pick a number between 20 and twice as big as my size. And right now it's going to set that to the first lot of blob sizes. But what happens when this is clone number two? We want it to be put in the second slot of blob sizes. So therefore I'm going to take my ID and say at whatever my ID is. So if my ID is two, then I'm going to look at slot number two of blob sizes. So that works out. And then for the speed, I want to set that to, let's see, before we had 600 divided by my size, I'm going to make these a little bit slower, which means a smaller number here, and uh, say 550 divided by, um, and instead of writing this whole thing over again, I want to make sure it's exactly the same, not just a random number. So I'm going to say it is the item of my ID of the blob size. So, whoops, there we go. 550 of whatever this number is. So whatever uh, the size of the of the of this clone is, I want to divide it by 550 and insert that into blob speed at the correct slot for my clone ID. If none of this is making sense, that's fine. Just copy this code. <laughs> If it is making sense, then great. I hope you can learn about uh, how to set IDs for clones so that we can um, control each one individually. Now let's change um, some of the looks for each clone. I want them to be different colors. So let's say uh, change color effect by a random number, let's say between 10 and 100. And then I'm also going to uh, set the size to the uh, blob size that corresponds to our clone ID. And I want to go to a random spot on the screen. So I'm going to say go to random X and random Y and there our x coordinates span from negative 240 to 240. So I'm going to say negative 239 to 239 just, just to keep it within the screen. I don't know if that actually matters. And then our y spans from negative 180. So I'm going to say negative 179 to positive 179. And then after all that happens, then I want to show ourselves. Now, let's make it move. But I only want to make it move until it touches the player sprite. So let's say repeat until, so it's going to repeat whatever's in here until it's touching player. And what I want it to repeat is I want it to move. I want it to turn a little bit because if it's not turning at all and it's just like going in a straight line, that's super boring and uh, would not be fun at all, right? And then I also want to say if it's on the edge, then I want it to bounce off. I don't want to just get stuck on the edge. Um, we want it to move a certain speed. We want it to make we want to make sure it's moving at the right speed for its size. So we're going to move according to the speed that corresponds to this clone. So uh, the blob speed that's been recorded in the list and we want it to also turn not just 15 degrees, because that's also boring, 
but each time it can turn either negative 10 to a positive 10 degrees, anywhere in between those two values. Let's hide these lists and just see where we're at right now. Okay, so we see, cool, there are some clones floating around and you see that clone touched the um, player, so it stopped. Okay, now let's go ahead and say, okay, so repeat until touching player. So as soon as it touches the player, we want it to hide itself. And then we want it to check to see if the blob clone is bigger than the player, then we want it to end. We want the game to end. If the blob clone is smaller than the player, then we want the player to get bigger and the blob clone to just go away. So since we have two options that can happen based on one condition, we want to use the if then else statement or block here. So let's check if my size, which is a player variable, is bigger than uh, the size of the clone that it's touching, then I want to change my size by, well, not the whole size, not this number, but we should probably cut it in half, otherwise you would get way too big way too fast. So whatever the size of the clone is divided by two. And then we want to um, stop everything if, so if this is true, if my size is bigger than the size of the clone, then great, we change the size of the player. But if not else, then we want to stop everything, okay? And then we can delete this clone. And actually, I'm going to add a wait in there. Wait 0 0.2 seconds just in case. I just want to make sure everything processes before we delete the clone. And then I actually want to add one more thing. I'm going to go over to the stage. And on the backdrops, I want to add a backdrop that says and say game Oops. over okay and then I want to say uh, before stop all I want to switch the backdrop to the second one I should probably rename that to game over so it's more clear but that's the one that says game over and while we're thinking about it let's go ahead and go to events and make sure that we are switched to the to the right backdrop when we press the play button. Okay, that should be it for the blob. Let's move on to the food. For the food, we want a bunch of food to appear all over the screen. We want them to be small. We don't need many variables because we want them to all be the same size, so we don't need anything crazy like lists. We are going to clone the food a sprite a bunch of times, but it's not going to be as crazy as the blob one. Um, they're not moving or anything like that. So the first thing that we want to do is hide the original sprite because we're only going to show the clones. We are going to set the food amount to 30. Let's just say that it uh, we that's how many foods will appear on the screen at once. And if you want more food, you can increase this number. Less food, you just decrease this number. And then I want to repeat um, this many times. So in this case, it's going to be 30. And I want to create a clone of myself. Basically, this means when we press the green flag, it's just going to make a ton of food everywhere. Let's say when I start as a clone, I want to set my size to, let's make the food pretty small. So let's make it 15%. I want to set the color effect to a random number between 1 and 100. We'll go to a random x and y coordinate and then show itself. And then I want it to check forever. So constantly be checking if 
it's touching the player, then I want to change my size, which is the player's size, my size by, let's say, 2. You can make this bigger or smaller. And then I also want to change food amount by negative 1. After that happens, I want to delete this clone. So that's what happens when I start as a clone. But if we do this, then eventually these little food will just all disappear. And we won't have any more food. So I want more food to appear. And I'm going to do that by adding another loop down here uh, with a conditional saying forever check to see if the food amount is ever less than 30 then I want it to uh, create a clone of myself another clone of myself and just to reflect in the counter that we have um, created another clone change food amount by one all right so now if we eat a food another one should appear and you can see that happening and that my friends is the whole game we should be able to play it now let's play it in full screen mode okay that's the project i think we are done I bet there are lots of cool ways that we could enhance this project by adding like a timer or a score counter or something like that. But for now, I think we are done. So thank you so much for watching.